Welcome to Atlantic City, where tomorrow the push to the 2021 Professional Fighters League playoffs begins at Ocean Casino Resort. On top of that, a special main event. The greatest women's boxer on the planet, Clarissa Shields, makes her MMA debut against Brittany Elkin. Shields is on a mission to become a two-sport world champion. Shields, Elkin, and featherweights and lightweights in win or go home action. Welcome to the PFL Weigh-In Show. Greetings, fight fans. I'm Sean O'Connell, joined as always by the Hall of Famer Randy Couture and the MMA guru himself, Mr. Kenny Florian. Gentlemen, let's get right into this. The quote, Clarissa Shields, the greatest woman of all time, and she has earned that title. Three division pro boxing champion, two times an Olympic gold medalist in pugilism. And now she's willing to risk the reputation and all of it in the prime of her career to become a two sport champion, Kenny. It's amazing. You know, it takes a lot of courage and dedication to go to a completely different sport like mixed martial arts. Despite all of her accomplishments in boxing, it is very different. She's going to have to adjust her striking, she's going to have to learn the wrestling game. Jiu-Jitsu, all those counters, all the different defenses on the ground. That is a lot to learn, but she has dedicated a large portion of her life over the last seven months being over there with those two men right there, Greg Jackson and Mike Wigglejohn in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and she is ready to rock. And on top of that, it's the classic striker versus grappler matchup with Brittany Elkin. If only we had someone on the crew who was an MMA practitioner with grappling skills who knew what it was like to fight a boxing world champion. Oh, Randy Couture, you beat James Tony inside of a cage. Yeah, well, I, I guarantee you Brittany Elkin is asking herself the same questions I was asking about James Tony. How much MMA has this person been able to learn in the seven months leading into her MMA debut? Now, she's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu under Lovato Jr., who's an amazing practitioner. She's got very good skills, and she's been here before. She faced Kayla Harrison, two-time gold medalist in judo, in her exhibition fight. So I, she learned a lot in that, and she brings a lot of that here. She predicts a second-round finish, which is a bold statement. That's the showcase main event. And leading up to it, we'll have featherweights and lightweights in the men's divisions looking for more points in the playoff format. And now, if you're new to the PFL format, we got to explain that here in a second. But two important fights have been rescheduled. Lance the Party Palmer and Anthony Showtime Pettis will be fighting now two weeks from tomorrow night, June 25th. They will be added to that card, and they will round out, potentially, the playoff spots for both featherweight and lightweight divisions. If you are new to the PFL format, regular season playoff and championship, Kenny Florian has it coming. The second half of the 2021 regular season is the last chance for fighters in all six weight divisions to earn points and to secure their playoff spot. Remember, it's three points for a win plus bonus points for early finishes. Only the top four fighters with the most points in each division will qualify. It's win in advance, lose, and go home. Fighters who qualify for the PFL playoffs will then compete to earn their spot at the 2021 PFL World Championship, the biggest night in MMA, six title fights in one night. The winner of each earns $1 million. 10 p.m. Eastern, it's those four fights on ESPN2 and simulcast on ESPN+. Plus. Lock Nain, Bubba Jenkins, Clay Collard, and Clarissa Shields in her debut, all favorites. Elkin, Luderbach, Moffitt, and Diamond will look to pull off the upsets. That's again, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Now we take a look at our lightweight standings. Clay Collard, six points so far. Three points from a decision victory over Anthony Pettis. And because Joelton Luderbach missed weight this morning, Collard receives an automatic three-point walkover victory in this fight. But he says that's not enough. He wants the opportunity to earn bonus points if he can get the finish tomorrow, and he will have that opportunity. Now, Clay Collard had a huge upset victory to really make a statement in his first regular season fight against Anthony Showtime Pettis. He wants to be the number one seed hanging in the playoffs, Randy. Can he make it happen? I think he can. He's definitely going to ride the wave of that great performance against Anthony Pettis. It goes from being the underdog to now being the favorite to win this whole thing. 
Great boxing, laser precision in his striking and his combinations. With six professional boxing fights to his credit. He's also got a well-rounded game. He did a great job, got into a little trouble, but managed to, to hold the, his ground and make it through the whole fight against Anthony Pettis. We asked Clay Collard what has changed since he beat Anthony Showtime Pettis. He said, nothing. I'm just a small town boy still working hard. I want a million dollars. And his opponent, Joelton Luderbach, standing in his way, a very narrow decision loss in his first fight. He missed weight, but still incredibly dangerous. Yeah, that's right. He's tall, he's rangy, and he's going to use that here against Clay Collard. He will mix it up on the feet, but more than anything else, because of his jiu-jitsu background, he's looking to try to get to that body lock position, that clinch position, especially up against the cage, where he can take down his opponent and utilize his ground and pound and submission skills. He does not want to be on the feet for too long against someone like Clay Collard, so expect him to try to take this fight to the mat as quickly as possible. Clay Collard, Joelton Luderbach will take place in the lightweight division, but what's going on at 145 pounds? Let's take a look at the featherweight standings where Brendan Lothnane is currently top of the table. Six points for a first round finish. He knocked out Shea Marais. Several other fighters are in the mix, including Bubba Batman Jenkins. He heads into tomorrow with three points. And man, not all points are created equal because that was a big win for Bubba Jenkins. But let's start with Brendan Lochnane. He can clinch the number one seed with a finish in any round. He feels like he's on his way to a championship, Kenny. Yeah, that's right. He's been all smiles since he's come here to the PFL. He loves to fight. He loves to compete. He loves this format. And so far, he's been absolutely killing it here in the first round against Shaman Moraes, where he landed pretty much every strike you could throw, whether he was countering, whether he was moving forward, whether he was stopping takedowns. He was just firing on all cylinders. And Brendan Lochnane is a favorite here for a reason. Uh, unbelievable striker, and this kid should wrestle as well, Sean. And a lot of people think that that first round knockout made Brendan Lochnane the favorite at featherweight, but he's certainly not the only man who had a statement victory in the first half of the regular season. Bubba Badman Jenkins knocked off a two-time PFL champion in Lance Palmer, Randy. Yeah, well, <laughs> Bubba Jenkins thinks he has Lance Palmer's number. I mean, just ask him, he'll tell you. <laughs> Bubba's an amazing wrestler, national champion for Arizona State. He uses that wrestling very, very effectively in his fighting style. That doesn't mean he doesn't have striking ability and other submission skills, but he uses his wrestling to smother his opponent Put them on the ground, float over them, make life difficult and miserable for every single one of them. And I expect him to bring that same thing into this fight tomorrow night. Yesterday at the press conference, Bubba Jenkins and Brendan Lochnane were sit right next to each other. And they kept looking back and forth. And they said, it's me and you in the championship. Will that prediction come true? Well, we got to see how things play out in this push to the playoffs. We've covered what happens on ESPN2 starting at 10 p.m. Starting at 7 Eastern, ESPN Plus, five unbelievable fights. Chris Wade welcomes a newcomer in Armand Ospinov. Shaman Marias looks to bounce back from a tough loss. And you can see Ahmed Aliyev, a heavy favorite right now over Luik Rajabov. Marcin Held, we haven't even talked about Marcin Held. He knocked off a two-time champion in his own right. And the, the two-time champ that he knocked off was Natan Schultz, who now is facing a last-second opponent change. That's a tough task for everyone. He's looking to bounce back off a loss and one more challenge to overcome. Yeah, that's right. You know, for Schultz, uh, you know, he had a tough matchup here uh, against Marcin Held. I don't think a lot of people expected uh, that Marcin would stand up with Schultz as long as he did. Uh, he's known as one of the best submission guys in the world. Uh, but decided to stand up and strike, and he was landing combination after combination. And by the time Schultz got onto the rhythm, it was kind of too late, had a strong third round, but he's got some work to do. And Martin Held, Randy, coming off that huge win, he now takes on a PFL newcomer in Olivier Alban Mercier, who had a pretty successful run in the UFC. He's a great grappler in his own right. Yeah, he's a very good grappler. We haven't seen a lot of him, so we don't know what to expect, really, but he's definitely uh, going to do a great job. Chris Wade will be the man who starts off the night. Two-time PFL semifinalist, and he takes on the newcomer, Armand Ospinov, out of Kazakhstan. 
All right, we've seen great things from Chris Wade, but he's just this far away every time. If he wants to make a push into the playoffs, the work starts tomorrow night. Yeah, and he says, you know, I always get matched up with these kind of guys, you know, these guys that nobody knows who they are, and they are all tough as nails. Uh, and he has another one of those matchups in the and the guy from Kazakhstan in Ospinov. So uh, a tough matchup here. Uh, but I think with Chris Wade, his experience, he's feeling more comfortable now. And he's had a second go at this weight cut, and he's ready to run. You said we don't know much about OAM. We know nothing about Arman Ospinov yeah. coming out of the relative obscurity of the <laughs> Kazakhstani pro fight scene. Yeah, well, we know he has four daughters. That makes him pretty tough, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his motivation. This says this money will go a long ways. It's motivated him to put himself out there in the PFL and try and take care of that family. Featherweight action, and Lillian Garcia puts these fighters on the scale. Well, good evening, fight fans. We are very excited about tomorrow night's fights, all taking place at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. In fact, all the fights can be seen on ESPN+. And now we get the action started with the official weigh-ins. Introducing to you first, in the blue corner, fighting out of Shimken, Kazakhstan, Arman Ospino. His official weight, 144 and three quarter pounds. In the red corner, Fighting out of Islip, New York, Chris Wade. His official weight, 146 pounds. in the featherweight division, Shamal Marais and Jesse Stern. Stern making his PFL debut, and Marais looking to bounce back off a loss to Brendan Lochnane in his first bout. Let's start with Shamal Marais. It's tough, it's always demoralizing when you're on the wrong end of a first round finish. Can he bounce back? No question about it, but it also can be motivating as well. You know, he does not want to go out like that. Uh, he has a great opportunity here to bounce back, uh, not only get a win, but perhaps get a, a knockout win in, in, in round one. He he could potentially still be in this, so uh, I think Morais is going to be very motivated to be aggressive and look for that finish early. Well, Marais looking to bounce back, but for Stern, it's his one opportunity to earn points. It is his one opportunity to earn points. He thought the biggest thing for him coming into this was making the weight. Yeah. The weight was going to be a problem. He's a well-rounded fighter. He's got great skills. He's got his hands full with shame on Marais. Lillian Garcia puts these fighters on our scale. In the blue corner, fighting out of Baltimore, Maryland, relentless Jesse Stern. His official weight, 146 and three quarter pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Niterói, Brazil, here is Shimon Moraes. His official weight, 146 pounds. In the lightweight division, it'll be Ahmed Aliyev versus Luik Rajabov. And if you are looking for a potential fight of the night, keep your eyes on this one. These two men are tough and anything but boring anytime we see them. Let's start with Ahmed Aliyev, Randy. He comes from that Russian background, so he's got good wrestling, but his striking is really what separates him. His striking is formidable. He 
finds his distance and range so well. He uses great angles and great footwork. We haven't seen much of him on the ground, but he's a Sambo world champion. He's pretty good down there, so it's going to be interesting. And Luik Rajabov always fights with a chip on his shoulder, but he felt like he got jobbed in a decision in his first fight. He is angry, he is hungry, he wants the points. Yeah, I, I always thought he was made out of granite, so that's a tough chip to get off his shoulder, but no, th this guy is very tough. Uh, he, he moves forward all the time. I think the way that these guys match up, I think they're gonna deliver uh, an awesome performance. This one doesn't feel like a decision, I'll tell you that. Lillian Garcia puts him on a skin. In the blue corner, fighting man of Dujon Bay, Tushikistan, Louis Jaguar Paul Rajava. His official weight, 156 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Astrakhan, Russia, Ahmed Aliyev. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. We mentioned this fight a little bit earlier, another one that promises fireworks, although these might come on the ground with two great grapplers. Marcin Held out of Poland, Olivier Alban Mercier, French-Canadian, both of these guys experienced veterans with a lot on the line. Let's start with Marcin Held. We talked about it earlier, the big upset victory. It only matters so much if you don't continue with a victory tomorrow night. Absolutely. He, he shocked everybody with the way he plotted forward through every combination in the book at Nathan Schultz. He did an amazing job. We never saw a submission, and he's a leg lock specialist. So I think we're going to see this one on the ground, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it comes out. And OAM has promised this will be the fight of the night. He said, no, no, this is the best matchup on the card. He thought they would fight a long time ago. It materializes tomorrow night. That's right. This is an exciting Canadian fighter, a guy that I've trained with uh, when he was early in his mixed martial arts career, and he's developed not only to uh, an excellent level in grappling, but also has developed into a very dangerous striker as well. And if you've trained with Kenny Florin, you've been in the game for a really long time. He survived, <laughs> so that's just that alone. I mean, <laughs> wow. Take it away, Lillian. In the blue corner, fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the Canadian gangster, Olivier Aubon Messier. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Tiffe, Poland, here is Marcin Hell. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. Our final fight on the ESPN Plus card, Natan Schultz, the two-time lightweight PFL champion, taking on Alexander Martinez, a rising prospect who is still yet to taste defeat in his pro mixed martial arts career. Randy, when a champ is coming off a loss as Natan Schultz is, we can expect the best of him. Exactly, that's what I want to see. We saw Natan suffer his first loss in two seasons. I mean, he's literally a two-time champ. That's where I want to see the championship character that this man possesses. We're going to see him come storming back tomorrow night.
And this matchup came together late, which means it's short notice for both people. When you're a prospect on the rise, that might not have happened to you before. What does it do for Alexander Martinez? Well, I think for Martinez, uh, I think he saw his last fight. And despite getting the win, he said, listen, that was not my best performance. There's a lot of things I could have done better. So he's always looking for a better performance and a better version of himself. The way that both of these guys fight and the way that Natan Schultz is most certainly going to come out, I think this is going to be one of the most exciting fights of the night. Lillian? In the blue corner, fighting out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, and representing Paraguay, here is Alexander Martinez. His official weight, 156 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Jean Villet, Brazil, here is your two time PFL lightweight world champion, Natan Russo Schultz. His official weight, 156 pounds. Fights will be on ESPN Plus, simulcast on ESPN Plus and on ESPN2 starting at 10 Eastern. These four fights, Lock Nane and Diamond, Jenkins and Moffitt, Clay Collard and Jolton Luderbach, and of course, the MMA debut of Clarissa Shields, the heavy favorite, that she takes on Brittany Elkin. It's four fights, it's four great fights, three of them with playoff spots potentially on the line here and that huge main event, Kenny, I don't know which one I'm most excited about. I don't know. I mean, things get kicked off with Loch Nain and Diamond. Uh, those guys are definitely going to go at it. That's going to deliver. And, of course, the main event, we're going to find out uh, how good Clarissa Shields is at this whole MMA thing. So can't wait. And Clay Collar coming off of that upset. I'll hammer this thing to death. Nobody <laughs> knew him. Nobody knew him until uh -huh. they started watching him box during the pandemic and then a huge upset like that. Yeah. He's, he's maybe on the edge of superstardom in our sport. Everybody was talking about Collard's boxing coming to this because of the six boxing matches he had while everybody else was locked down on the planet. Yeah. Uh, pretty impressive. I think Anthony Pettis maybe let his ego get in the way a little bit. Instead of going out and taking him down and taking him out of that strength of boxing, he stood up with him, and I think that cost him the fight, in my opinion. Four great fights on ESPN2 and on ESPN+. Plus. And it'll start off, as Katie mentioned, with Brendan Lachnain and Tyler Diamond, the only two featherweights matched up in the second half of the regular season that are coming off victories in their first half fight. So it just played out that way. All of these, or both of these guys already have points, but they want the number one seed, and that is potentially on the line if they can get a finish early in this fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we start the weigh-ins for the fights that will be taking place on ESPN Plus and ESPN2, all starting at 10 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night. First, in the blue corner, fighting out of Orville, California, Tyler Diamond. His official weight, 145 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Manchester, England, Brendan Lockney. His official weight, 146 pounds. Quick question here for Tyler Diamond. 
Mr. Diamond, Brendan Lochnane came into the PFL a couple seasons ago with a lot of hype as a prospect, coming off his first regular season victory. Obviously, he delivered on that hype. But you came off a win, too, and a lot of people have high hopes for you. What should we expect in this matchup to open our ESPN2 card tomorrow? You can expect the fight of the night, the best performance for me that you've ever seen. I'm the underdog king coming into this, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. No talking crap for me. I'm just excited to get in there. And, of course, Brendan, top of the table right now. With a finish in any round, you can secure the number one seed. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow night? Listen, I've trained my ass off for not just this fight, the fight before, non-stop from Brendan Lockneen. I'm already at the top, six points. I'm going to get another six points tomorrow. Let's go, baby. United Kingdom, stand up, stay up for this one. It'll be, a, it'll be a late night show in the UK or an early morning show, <laughs> as it were. But Brendan Lochnane promises it'll be worth your time if you're staying up across the pond to watch this one. The action moves on in featherweight business. Bubba Badman Jenkins welcomes Bobby Moffitt to the PFL Smart Cage. Randy, this theme will repeat itself a couple of times tomorrow night. Bobby Moffitt. One fight in the regular season, one chance for points, and if he's going to get him, he's got to do it against a tough opponent. Yeah, I think he's, he said, I'm relaxed, I'm not worried about the points, I'm going to go out and fight my butt off and have fun. Will that be enough, Kenny Florian, against a guy like Bubba Badman Jenkins, who made such a statement in his first fight? Well, I don't know. I mean, obviously, he has a tremendous amount of confidence. His wrestling is, is probably the best here in the division. Um, and uh, he already has, has taken out the former champion. So I think this is a guy that not only can wrestle, but also he can strike. He's a threat on the feet as well. Bubba feels like he is the man to beat, riding three points as he heads into tomorrow night. Lillian Garcia. In the blue corner, fighting out of Homewood, Illinois, Bobby the Wolfman Marfet. Official weight, 146 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Virginia Beach, Bubba Batman Chicken. Official weight, 145 and one half pounds. Bobby Moffitt making your PFL debut, and at the press conference yesterday, you said, this is going to be an upset. I'm walking away with a win. Now, Bubba countered that and said, you don't even believe it. So tell us, how confident are you heading into this bout? I'm finishing this dude tomorrow. I, don't, I know he doesn't believe it, but he doesn't have to believe it. When he wakes up tomorrow, he's going to know. Bubba, you heard it again. Another prediction, this time of a finish. What's going to happen? Um, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to eat my breakfast, <laughs> eat my Wheaties, get excited about what's going to happen in the nighttime, and do what bad men do. I sit, plain and simple. I'm walking out of here with a quick six and going to be the number one seed for the upcoming brackets. Bubba Badman Jenkins predicting a first round finish. If you're not familiar, a quick six means six points in a first round finish. Those are the featherweight bouts on our ESPN2 card. At lightweight, Joelton Luderbach, Clay Collard. We talked about this one a little bit before. Luderbach 
just narrowly on the wrong end of a decision against Haush Manfio in his first regular season fight. He feels like he still hasn't shown us the best version of himself. Do we see it against Collar? Well, listen, he's really been working very hard on his striking. He's going to be tall and rangy. Uh, and, you know, more than anything else, he uses his striking to try to get into the clinch. I think that's where he has the best shot at winning this fight. Use those strikes at range, but get to that body lock position where he can take you down, control you, ground and pound, and maybe work the submission. Randy, because Luderbach missed weight, Clay Collard didn't even have to take this fight. He got three automatic points in a walkover situation. He has three points already for a total of six if, after the victory over Anthony yeah. Showtime Pettis. But he said, I'm a fighter. I want the number one seed. I want those bonus points. Yeah, I think he's right. Six points might not be good enough. He needs to go out there, ex execute, try and get those bonus points in any of those rounds, and that's only going to help him. Uh, I think he's gonna, you're going to see his striking on display again. Amazing boxing. But he's a well-rounded fighter. He can fight on the ground, too. And he's going to have to in this one, I think. Lillian Garcia, take it away. In the blue corner, fighting out of Dusseldorf, Germany, Joe Wilson, Pellegrino, Luderbach. His official weight, 159 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Burley, Idaho, here is Cassius Clay Collar. His official weight, 155 and three quarter pounds. Nose action there, <laughs> Kenny Florian. Uh, I mean, that was awesome. Uh, they, these guys don't know karate, but they know crazy. I think both <laughs> of them, you know, definitely did not like the fact that the other one got in his face. You see, Clay goes, no, 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 you don't get to do that. <laughs> definitely a little posturing. Now, look, uh, I, I made Wayans into a big joke in my career. Everyone knows that about me, but. Does any of that stuff affect you, Randy, or did it? It doesn't affect me, but it's my first chance in that shape up face to face to really kind of look a guy in the eye and get an idea where he's at, what he's thinking, how confident he is. And sometimes you can really tell where a guy's at. Lightweight action in a co made event tomorrow. We'll see how that one plays out. And how about a showcase main event? We've been talking about this all week. The MMA debut of Clarissa Shields taking on Brittany Elkin, who's 12 years deep in her MMA career. You could not be on more opposite ends of the spectrum experience-wise. Kenny, I'll start with you. Clarissa Shields does not have to do this. Three-division boxing champion in the pro ranks, two-time Olympic gold medalist, nothing to prove in combat sports. And in the prime of her athletic career, she says, no, I'm going to cross over. I'm going to show these MMA fighters that boxers can come this way and have success. Well, she's won it all in boxing, right? But I think she is genuinely intrigued by mixed martial arts. She wanted to try that. She wants another challenge. It shows the kind of warrior that, that she is. And, uh, and she's been working really hard. She has been taking this very, very seriously. Uh, and she wants to go out there and not just win, but win impressively. And by the way, she's not leaving boxing in the rearview mirror. She has a boxing match lined right. up for the end of the year. Amazing. <laughs> Two sport champ, maybe we'll see it with Caressa Shields. But Brittany Elkin is a brown belt in jujitsu. And if there's a kryptonite for a pro boxer, it's yeah. that groundwork, Randy. Yes, but the, the key is the transitions. Finding your distance, finding that opportunity to close and not get hit with those hands of Clarissa Shields. Brittany Elkin feels that she has that figured out. I'll tell you what, this is the best shape I've ever seen her in. We've yeah. seen her for, she is ripped. She looks great. Yep. And I love her chances. She's, she's got a great attitude about this. I think she's going to go out and let it out there. Lillian Garcia puts our final fight of the night on the scale. In the red corner, excuse me, in the blue corner, fighting out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, by way of New York City, Brittany Elkin.
Her official weight, 155 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Flint, Michigan, the greatest woman of all time, Clarissa T-Rex Shields. Weight 154 and three quarter pounds. Okay, Brittany Elkin. It's supposed to be the coming out party for a boxing champion into the sport of mixed martial arts, and if anyone can spoil that party, it's you. How do you make that happen tomorrow night? I feel completely prepared to make that happen tomorrow night. Uh, my, my whole game plan is keeping the distance uh, at my, my set pace and uh, taking her to where I want to go. Thank you, Brittany. And Clarissa, the buildup is what it is. We've talked about it a lot here on the eve of your mixed martial arts debut. How are you feeling and what do you think of your opponent saying, I'm going to be able to keep this fight at my distance? Um, well, I'm just happy to be here and happy to, to get this opportunity uh, by the PFL. Um, I feel like if anybody can make the crossover, it's Clarissa Shield. So we're here. The fight is tomorrow. And um, I personally don't care nothing about what Brittany Elkin says at this point. We got to fight tomorrow. She can say she's going to knock me out in the first round or she's going to knock me out the second round. I've heard it all before, and I've never, I've never really lost a fight. So I look forward to having what they call a real fight and do all this wrestling and uh, boxing and striking stuff and showing the world what I'm made of tomorrow. Thank you, Clarissa. Undefeated as a pro boxer? two-time Olympic gold medalist. She has tasted a lot of success in combat sports. This is a whole new animal for Clarissa Shields. Excited to see how it happens. Take a look at the tail of the tape between these two. Brittany Elkin with a significant reach advantage, especially in the stand-up. She's three inches taller. Some final thoughts before we head into tomorrow night. You know, I'm just really curious of how Clarissa not only, uh, you know, looks on the wrestling and jiu-jitsu portion of this fight, but how she adjusted her, her striking uh, in this fight here against Brittany Elkin. It's all going to come down to the proper range and what she does with her feet. Randy, you mentioned this before. It's about that transition, getting inside yep. where you can get someone to the ground. Can you wear one, two, three combinations from a world champion boxer? That's a big question. Yeah, well, and I think Brittany explained exactly what she feels like she needs to do, which is stay outside of that punching range, use those longer weapons that she obviously has, and pick her opportunities to close the distance and get her hands on Clarissa Shields and find a way to hopefully get her to the ground. It's a 155-pound women's showcase main event, the debut of Clarissa Shields, and of course, Brittany Elkin looking to spoil the party. Action begins on ESPN Plus, 7 o'clock Eastern. Featherweights and lightweights in a push to the playoffs. And of course, starting at 10 p.m. on ESPN2 and Plus. Playoff spots on the line, winner go home scenarios, and of course, the mixed martial arts debut of the quote, Clarissa Shields. Kenny Florian, Randy Couture, and Sean O'Connell will be there. See you tomorrow night.